there are many types of erasers available, or rubbers as we call them here in the UK. Of these, some are eminently suitable, and others are to be avoided at all costs. I'll begin with those. Ink erasers. These were not formulated for the removal of graphite, and they will quite happily remove your paper. Avoid the embarrassment of drilling a hole through it. This is an old typewriter eraser. We go back a long way as I'll explain. Drilling a hole through your paper? Been there, done that. And this is the culprit. This dog's eye highlight is green hued because I filled the hole with typewriter correction fluid. Well, that was many years ago. General pencil erasers. These are less harmful, but still best avoided. All rubbers work by, well, rubbing. Rubbing requires pressure, and pressure will inevitably force some graphite deeper into your paper. They're also not very effective because they can't absorb the graphite or discard it easily. The crystalline structure of graphite is flat plates. That's why it's shiny. An eraser will pick up the flat plates, but once saturated, it slides those plates over those remaining on the paper. That occurs very readily because graphite is an excellent dry lubricant. And when the plates slide, they're quite likely to grind others deeper into the paper. Soft Vital Art Erasers. Now we're entering the realm of suitable erasers. Erasers designed to remove graphite. They crumble more easily to discard the graphite they've removed. However, they cannot tackle heavily applied graphite. And if you attempt to erase a line through an area of graphite, expect a line with soft and smudged edges. The eraser will inevitably drag some graphite along with it. They come in many forms, mono style, stick, and block, for example. Many artists use a monotype for creating light hairs. I don't. Hairs have sharp edges, not soft. They are very good though for cleaning up smudges and stray graphite within a drawing and the margin. Incidentally, the click type, Steckler, Pentel and so on, fit a standard pencil sharpener. I usually sharpen mine to a point, or sometimes I'll cut a chisel end. The kneaded eraser is a definite improvement over the others we've looked at. They can remove and absorb graphite, and they only need a light rubbing or tapping action, or a simple press down. They can be pinched into sharp edges, or formed into fine points for accurate erasing in tight areas. They're the go-to eraser for many artists. They used to be my favourite too, until I purchased a pack that crumbled when I tried to form a point or an edge. In desperation, I reached for the wall putty I used to hold my paper onto my drawing board. Well, it looked very similar. And that's how I discovered my new favourite, blue tack. This is the original semi-sticky wall putty, designed for holding posters up on walls. It also, unlike all other erasers, needs no pressure or mechanical movement to work. The lightest touch adheres graphite to it, so it removes it cleanly. And, once picked up, blue tack won't redeposit the graphite. This is exactly what we need. The ability to lift graphite right out of the paper's tooth without having to apply any damaging pressure. And if you draw in layers, it also has the ability to adjust the value of the top layer without disturbing the layers beneath, which gives infinite control over values. Of course, a kneaded eraser might work for you as well as blue tack does for me, so do try one first. And if you have both and you can't tell them apart, a kneaded eraser bounces. Blue tack doesn't. Almost every beginner artist I've worked with and a few professionals has had a fear of drawing too dark, possibly in the belief that it's irreversible. You have two tools, a pencil that applies graphite from gentle to aggressive and an eraser that can gently or aggressively remove graphite. The two complement each other perfectly. Think of erasing as a means of adjusting values, not of just removing errors or cutting through existing drawing. If I can show you a way of taking black almost back to white, would that help? Well, try this. 
Fill the small square with 4B, dark and solid. First, let's try a vinyl art eraser. They're quite effective when the face is clean. Once coated, it slides graphite over graphite, smears and probably pushes some deeper into the paper. Now the kneaded eraser. I haven't used one for many years, so you might obtain better results, but it does need a degree of pressure to work. Rubbing has some effect. Tapping has some success too. Pressing and rolling definitely removes graphite. Now let's try an eraser that requires no pressure at all, my trusty blue tack. Roll a ball into a cylinder. Now gently roll it across your square, no pressure required. Already you've removed a significant amount of 4B. Now rock and roll, or dab, but be aware that dabbing can create troublesome hard edges. And don't drag or rub, that just smears. Blue tack works because it is slightly sticky and can pick up and absorb graphite. Persevere. This might take some time, but you will have removed the 4B without damaging your paper. And finally, when you're certain the blue tack cannot remove more, use your vinyl art eraser. But be aware that from that point on, you are probably modifying or damaging the tooth of your paper. Remove with blue tack only and you can almost always draw back into that area because it doesn't flatten or damage the tooth. You will need to occasionally clean your kneaded eraser or blue tack. Do that by pulling it into pieces or a long rope. Then fold it back into itself and then roll it back into a ball. A new blue tack might disappoint you. It will work, but perhaps no more effectively than a kneaded eraser. Blue tap becomes more malleable, improved with age, use and warmth. I keep a ball warm in my free hand as I draw. It's softer and slightly stickier. And it lasts. This ball is about three years old. I know I'm biased, but use blue tack and never again be afraid of over darkening an area of your drawing. You can load any area with as much graphite as you desire because you have the means to remove or adjust it. And remember, blacks and darks are your best friends. They open up a wide choice of greys for you. They increase the three-dimensionality of your work. They add impact and presence to your drawings. And they turn an overcast, grey day, flat and uninteresting drawing into one with life that dances in bright sunlight. If you found this video helpful, subscribe to my channel for more drawing tips and tricks and explore all the videos with me at drawwithmike.net.